In this problem, we're testing a claim about a mean in the particular case where we do not know sigma, the population standard deviation. Now, the book briefly goes over a second situation when we test a claim about a mean and we believe that we do know sigma, the true population standard deviation. The reality is that latter situation is quite unusual and we wouldn't come across it very often. After all, if we don't know the mean, mu, it's unlikely that we'll know the population standard deviation, sigma. So the techniques we're studying here are by far the most commonly used. The question that we're studying is, are supermodels taller? We've taken a random sample of nine, measured their height, and came up with a mean height of 65.8 inches and a standard deviation of 1.5 inches. Now just to be clear here, that 1.5 is standard deviation is an S. It's from the sample. We're not claiming that it is the s standard deviation of the heights of all women. We are given though that the height of the overall population of women is 63.6 .6 inches. And with that background we're going to uh, look at a number of questions about this problem. We'll go through them one at a time. Well, the first question uh, asked, what parameter are we studying? And this is one that I recommend that you always begin with. In this case, we're studying a mean, so that would be a mu. And what is it a mean of? Well, it's the mean height of supermodels. That's really what we're studying. We want to know if the mean height of supermodels is greater than the mean height of the population of women in general. And our point estimate, well, when we're working with a mean, the point estimate that we use is always x bar, the sample mean. In this case, that was 65.8 inches. We call the sample mean unbiased, and basically that means that uh, the mathematics guarantees us that if we take sample size larger and larger, the sample mean is guaranteed to approach the true population mean. Now let's go through the 10-step process that we've outlined to test a claim about a mean. The first step, well, we've pretty much completed that. We've identified the parameter. It is the mean height of supermodels. We should pause a moment to make sure we satisfy the requirements. In general, in testing a mean, we like to have a sample size greater than 30. We don't in this case. But since it is reasonable to assume that the heights of women are normally distributed, we can satisfy the requirements. I either need a sample size greater than 30, or I need to believe that the population I'm sampling from is normally distributed. In that case, that assumption is reasonable. In the second step, we need to formulate our hypothesis. We'll need the null and the alternate. The null we write is h0 mu well, the parameter we're studying is a mu, so that will appear next in my null hypothesis. Equals, our null hypotheses always have an equal sign, and 63.6 inches. So that's the assumed mean height of the supermodels. That's the assumption that I'm basing my uh, test on. And the alternate is that the mean height of supermodels is greater than 63.6 inches. And I've marked here that that's actually the claim, too, and that's handy to note. So after you've written the null and alternate hypothesis, uh, just annotate which one is actually the claim. That will become useful in our tenth step. We note it's a right tail test, and how do I know that? Well, I look at the alternate hypothesis, and that tells me whether I'm going to have a left, a right, or a two tail test. In this case, the inequality sign is pointing to the right, so I'll have a right tail test. The significance level is alpha is equal to 0.01. We were told up here to use a 1% significance level, so I translate that to alpha equal to 0.01. And now we're at the point in the problem where we need to go through, identify all the numerical values, decide if they're useful in solving our problem, and if they are, then we assign the correct uh, statistical symbol. I have a sample size of 9, so n is equal to 9. My sample mean is 65.8, that's the mean height of the 9 supermodels. And s, the sample standard deviation, is 1.5 inches. And now we know that uh, since we're studying a sample mean and we don't know sigma, 
we'll be using the student t distribution. And with the student t distribution, I need to know the degrees of freedom, but that's easy. That's always n minus 1. In this case, that's going to be 8. <clears throat> okay, in the next step, we'll need a critical value, in this case just a single value because it is a right tail test. I would get that by using inverse t, 0.99 and 8. 0.99 is the probability to the left of the critical value. Recall I'm doing a right tail test, so I'll have 0.01 probability to the right of the critical value, 0.99 probability to the left. And the second argument, 8, refers to the degrees of freedom. You should get 2.896 from your calculator. If you have a TI-83 and do not have the inverse T function, use table A3 and you'll get something really close to 2.896. I think it's also a good idea to draw a diagram at this point, just to remind ourselves what our test of hypotheses looks like. It's a right tail test. The distribution I'm using is a T distribution and has 8 degrees of freedom. That means it will be centered on zero, and it will have a general shape of a normal curve. Not exactly normal, but fairly close to it. The critical region, or the rejection region, is on the right, and the total area in the rejection region is always equal to the significance level. So that's alpha, and that's 0.01 in this case. And we've just uh, found out in the previous step that the critical value is 2.896. That's the T value for an 8 degrees of freedom that has 0.01 probability to the right. All right, now we're ready to actually calculate our statistics. Uh, the test statistic is 4.4 and the p-value is 0 0.001. There's two ways you can get these answers. The easiest way would be using the t-test on your TI calculator. That would be uh, stat and then tests. And you'll be asked for the uh, N and the S and the X bar. And make sure in the option you have the correct alternate hypothesis. And you should end up with these values. The calculator will give you a T equals 4.4. That's the value of your test statistic. They use the letter T to remind you that this is a student T distribution. And the P value is, well, I'm rounding it off here to 0 0.001. Now let's update our graph of this information. I've taken the previous graph that had the rejection region and critical value, and I've added the test statistic, 4.4, and I've marked the p-value, 0.001. Clearly, the test statistic is to the right of the critical value. 4.4 is indeed greater than 2.896, so we are in the rejection region. The p-value is a probability or an area, so it should be compared with alpha, and that's why I deliberately put it above the x-axis. The slice of the curve it's pointing to is so small that we can barely see it here. In fact, it's only tens, hundreds, one thousandths, one one thousandths of the total area under that curve. But remember that the p-value is the probability of getting a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than what you found. So that 0 .001 is a probability of getting a test statistic 4.4 or greater. It's the area underneath my curve to the right of 4.4. And you can see in the graph, there's not much there. All right, let's calculate the corresponding confidence interval. Now, this is a right tail test, so my corresponding confidence level is 1 minus 2 alpha. Remember, in this case, I have to do 1 minus 2 alpha, so that's going to be 98%. We calculated confidence intervals back in Chapter 7, so I won't review that here. I'll just remind you, you can use your t-interval function on your calculator. And you'll come up with a 98% confidence interval that looks like this. And we would write our statement in this manner. I am 98% confident that the mean height of supermodels is between 64.4 and 67.2 inches. All right, we've done all the work. Now let's come to our conclusion. There are three different ways we can come to a conclusion. In this case, they're, all, uh, they're always going to give us the same uh, result. The traditional method is when you compare this test statistic with a critical value. Basically, you're looking to see if the test statistic falls in the rejection region. In this case, it did. 
So using the traditional method, I would say I reject the null because the test statistic is in the rejection region. In other words, 4.4, my test statistic, is to the right of 2.896, my critical value. Now using the p-value method, in the p-value method I compare the p-value, which is a probability, with the significance level. The p-value is 0 0.001, and that's less than the significance level of 0 0.01. If the p is low, the null must go, so again I reject the null hypothesis. And finally, using the confidence interval method, because I'm 98% confident that the mean height of supermodels is between 64.4 and 67.2 inches, I would also reject the null that says that it's equal to 63.6 inches. And at the last step here, we'll state the interpretation of our study. I put an arrow where <coughs> next to the alternate hypothesis because we rejected the null. So the arrow's pointing to the alternate, and the alternate was my claim. So I'd end up with the final statement, the data supports the claim that the mean height of, sup height of supermodels is greater than 63.6 inches. Now let's uh, answer a few more questions about the problem. What exactly does the p-value mean in the context of this problem? Well, the p-value is 0 .001. And the p-value in this case is the following probability. If I assume that the mean height of supermodels really is 63.6 inches, based on that assumption, what's the probability that a random sample of nine supermodels would have a mean height of 65.8 inches and a standard deviation of 1.5? Well, we see it's very unlikely. So in that case, that led us to reject the null hypothesis and say, chances are that the mean height of supermodels is not 63.6 inches. What's a type 1 error in this situation? Well, a type 1 error, we would conclude that the mean height of supermodels was greater than 63.6, when really it wasn't. The probability of this type of error is just 0 .001, or my significance level. The probability of a type 1 error is always equal to alpha. Now, what would be a type 2 error in this situation? Well, a type 2 error, you conclude the mean height of supermodels is not greater than 63.6, when actually it is. We use the Greek letter beta to represent this probability, but we don't calculate it in this class.